Welcome to the fourth and final installment of the 100-ish dollar Z97 motherboard showdown. As you probably know by now, we've been adventuring into the world of affordable motherboards instead of top tier motherboards, which are expensive and don't really impact performance anyways. We're doing this because we want to explore the pros, cons, and trade-offs of boards that people are actually buying. In this video, we'll be covering the finished system experience of each board, things like one-touch overclocking, uh, utilities, and the final conclusion will be covered in this video. Don't forget to stay subscribed for less videos on affordable motherboards in the future, since apparently you guys aren't that into them anyways. Experience silent performance with the new Cooler Master Silencio 652S. Minimalist design, maximum compatibility. Click now to learn more. We'll start off with the fun stuff. Generally, all of the board's various overclocking utilities resulted in a 4.4 GHz overclock for the Intel G3258 CPU and XMP settings for the G-Skill Ripjaws 2400s, except for the ASRock board, which simply had a selectable profile. On the ASRock board, the 4.7 GHz profile failed and 4.6 GHz seemed stable enough, but it wasn't really fair as I had to manually verify the stability anyways, which kind of defeats the purpose of one-touch overclocking. Next up, we have the driver downloading experience, something that might not seem that important in the grand scheme of things, but we measured it. So MSI comes in first at 7.7 megabytes per second on average with ASUS as a close runner up at around 6.6 .6 megabytes per second. Gigabyte trails behind at 2.1 megabytes per second, landing it in third place. And last, and in this case least, is ASRock at 1.3 megabytes per second. Please keep in mind that while we tested all of these one right after the other, we were unsure of how loaded these companies' networks were at the time of testing, and we downloaded all of these files to our office in Western Canada, so your results will vary. So with all those megabytes per second, what did I download? Well, naturally, all the drivers some would expect, and some utility software as well. Something you may know if you've perused the software utility section of your motherboard's downloads before is that there are tons of them. And honestly, you shouldn't download most of them. But whatever you do, no matter how many you download, avoid network utilities like the plague. Windows is actually totally fine at handling this on its own and doesn't need additional bloatware to do it instead. Unless you really need prioritization for some reason and don't have that feature on your router where it belongs. If you do want to download any utilities, you could go for their overclocking, fan speed, or monitoring software. I suggest you use these largely just for monitoring, however, and use your UEFI for actually setting things up. If you're looking for information on UEFI, check out our last video here. And also, please note that if you do want to overclock in your operating system, that you'll need the Intel Management Engine driver installed. So it's time for the final conclusion. Obviously, if you're looking into buying a motherboard, I would suggest watching all of the other videos in this series, but as a quick overview, let's look into what really matters. First and foremost, I.O. matters. Make sure that you're going to be able to plug in all the peripherals and drives into the board that you will need. Most of these boards will have you covered, but it is still an important question to ask yourself. Then we have PCI layout. Same type of question. Make sure you can hook up everything that you need to and not have any conflicts in terms of positioning. Another thing to note is the comparison of fan headers on your board and fan slots that you'll be filling in your case. Make sure there's enough and make sure that they are in the right spot. In general, case compatibility is important as well. If your 24-pin connector cable management holes don't line up with the location on the board, you're going to have a bad time. Now, thanks to Intel moving so many things onto their CPUs, there is very little difference between boards when it comes to performance and overclocking. So this shouldn't be that huge of a factor when looking into boards, especially in this price range. But looking into things like if it's running a dual BIOS and or a socketed BIOS setup might not be a bad idea. And choosing a board with a good software layout for all these BIOS-y dials and switches will help a lot. Overall, the motherboard landscape, especially in this bracket, is pretty level. There is much less of a difference between boards now than there has been in previous years, which is great news for folks looking to save a few extra bucks. So then what's the best for you? ASUS was a clear winner in UEFI and overall usability experience, but ASRock has a ton of fan headers compared to everyone else and was rocking loads of other features like SLI. MSI has great compatibility like ASUS, but a few more physical features than ASUS while still having nice things like rich fan control. 
Gigabyte had a great aesthetic style and a great dual BIOS implementation to keep you going, along with a variety of other features. Who do you think won? Let me know in the comments down below, or better yet, on the forum. Speaking of winning, if you love watching anime, you should check out Crunchyroll. With Crunchyroll Premium, you can watch your favorite anime shows anytime, anywhere. They have shows like One Piece, Bleach, and Fairy Tail. They also have your most current episodes of shows like Fate Stay Night, straight out of Japan. And they post them with professional subtitles as soon as one hour after they premiere in Japan. With Crunchyroll Premium, you can watch as much anime as you want, ad-free and in beautiful HD on a variety of devices for only $6.95 per month. But if you use our link, that's crunchyroll.com slash Linus, you can get a 30-day trial of their service absolutely free. So be sure to check them out in the link in the video description. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me through this series. Don't forget to comment down below or on the forum of which board you think reigned supreme of their... Socket cuisine? I don't know. Anyways, uh, while you're down below here commenting, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, dislike the video, depending on which color of board you like more. Uh, share it if you think it's helpful for someone who might be building a computer soon. And over on the forum, you can become a contributor because there will be reason to do that fairly soon. And in the video description below this video, you can check out a shirt link and over on the forum, if you like bouncing back and forth repeatedly, you can see uh, like help Linus Media Group link where you can change stuff like Amazon links to help us get kickbacks whenever you buy anything on Amazon. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.